if this movie is like when you're doing a group project and you have like that one person who talks a lot but really doesn't say much. The Watchers, a Shyamalan family movie production. This is one of those situations where you're like, yeah, I do hope the next generation of humans are better than the previous generation, but this turned out to be one of those other situations where the apple does not fall far from the tree. I saw the trailer in theaters. It looked kind of interesting. I was like, wow, this is a cool... I mean, I kind of want to know what's out there because we just see some people in this like box like room and they're being watched by something on the outside, some entity on the outside, which I guess we find out in this movie. I guess this is your spoiler warning because there's really I can't I can't talk about this film without spoiling the whole thing. In my opinion, this movie is not really worth watching. I watched it and it didn't. OK, I watched it because I had a curiosity that I needed to fix. I was curious about the Watchers. And then after I found out what the Watchers were, it was not a very satisfying revelation. It was almost frustrating at some point because I'm like, why am I watching this movie? We follow this girl named Mina. She's like a twin. She has some past trauma because she caused her mom's death. And now she's on a mission to deliver this parrot somewhere. And to get to whatever destination she was supposed to go to, she has to drive past this really big, scary forest in Northern Ireland. I guess she's following Google Maps, but like eventually she drives off road and i'm like why would you continue driving at this point like the road's not even a road anymore it's just like this dirt path and she continues to drive deeper and deeper into the forest until the point where her car breaks down she's stuck in the forest it's nightfall i don't know if this movie was supposed to be a horror movie it had like a couple of minor jump scares that surprised me because i'm easily startled but it's not that scary of a movie and it wasn't the psychological thriller i thought it was gonna be they would have been cool if the movie just started with her in the box which we later find out is called the coop it's really just a box in the middle of the forest and at night like one side of the wall turns into a mirror from the inside but the people or the entities on the outside can see within she meets this lady called madeline who also has these two other lost people called sierra and daniel they're presumably just travelers just like madeline that just got lost in the forest i don't know how realistic getting lost in the forest like this is it probably is it probably happens quite often so they're stuck there and then Madeline knows all the rules. She was sus from the very beginning, very desperately telling everyone, you have to be back at the coop by sundown and then you just have to let these entities watch you from the outside because I don't know, there was no explanation. Like you just can't turn your back to the mirror. I imagine most people were just watching this movie because they were curious to find out what the watchers were and we find out that they're fairies. <laughs> I can't, I don't know why this is, I don't know why it bothers me that they're fairies. I thought they were going to be humans outside. Like, you know, you think they're creatures, but they're actually just normal humans using you. Kind of like a cabin in the woods situation. And after I found out they were mythological creatures, I was like, oh, so this is one of those kind of like the ritual slash the witch the witch which spelled with two v's i don't know i don't know i i watched it because it had two v's that was the only reason i watched that movie but anyway so these creatures they look like lanky they're like long lanky humanoid figures and apparently they're fairies that used to have wings long ago the fairies and the humans lived together in harmony then everything changed when the war happened and then the humans i don't know if the humans like cut off their wings or something but they banished them into this forest in ireland and they're just trapped in the forest they have this special ability they're like called changeling fairies because they have this special ability to like change their form to mimic humans or anything basically oh, okay i guess that's cool is it cool? There's another point in this movie where I thought it was gonna go in an interesting direction, but it didn't. So in the forest, there's also like these really big holes. Presumably if you go down there, you'll see the watchers. And then Mina's like, oh my God, I kind of, I'm kind of curious. So she goes down there. She finds a newspaper and on the newspaper, it talks about a war. And the moment I saw that, I thought this was gonna be one of those movies where you find out that like, these watchers are actually mutated humans from like nuclear war or something. But no, <laughs> that's not that's not what it is. They're just fairies. And we don't really learn much about these fairies or what their purpose are or why they were even on earth or what they were doing on earth, but 
I guess because they can change into human forms, the humans and the fairies, they mated. And they had like half, half bred, hybrid fairy human people. That also kind of bothered me because I'm just like, how can humans and fairies mate? That was such an uncomfortable thought that I had to ask someone. I asked someone, just one person. <laughs> I was like, um, so like if this fairy could turn into like human form, would you like, you know, mate with it and in my mind i'm like there's no way why would you mate with like a monster that just looked like a human but the male species is an enigma now i have to just accept that it's a thing the watchers get angry you know because mina broke the rule and madeline was like i can't believe you broke the rule the watchers try to break into the coup they're looking for a way out and they find this secret passage, this secret door underneath the table in their coop. It leads down into a bunker, a vault, a vault bunker. And in the bunker, they find like a bunch of food. It's like a nice cozy little room down there with like a computer and like food. And then in the computer, they find like documentation, video documentation from the professor. And the professor was the guy that actually built. Well, he came to the forest to study the fairies. There was some tense atmosphere going on during that scene. And I thought something was going to happen. Like it was so tense. Like they were watching. I thought some weird revelation was going to happen or like, one of one of the members like madeline sierra daniel was gonna like betray them or something but nothing even happened there so that was another wasted wasted moment that was felt like it was building up to something but didn't and from the video logs they find out that in the end he kind of went crazy okay he captured one of the changelings for some reason he went crazy and then he just said if anyone finds this one day please destroy all the information and if you find yourself trapped in the forest you can go find my boat that i kept by the river and you can get out of here so yeah they escape and that's it. <laughs> I thought that was going to be it. And also, if he was studying the changelings, why did he make it so that they could see in, but he cannot see out? Like, how do you study a creature that comes out at night, but you can't even see them? Basically, the secret is they're just there to study humans so they could mimic them. But I'm just like, why? Why did you need to do that, changelings? Like, you and humans, like, you hate humans, but what, what are you trying to do? You can't leave the forest. You can't break the banishment spell, apparently. So I'm like, why do you mimic these humans? But anyways, they escape. <laughs> they escape. And then they take a bus back to the city. And <laughs> the whole time, <laughs> this is another point where I'm like, oh my god, the bus is going to take them back <laughs> into the forest and they're never going to escape. They're eternally trapped. <laughs> But no, they do escape. They get back into the city and then Madeline, not Madeline, Mina, she goes back to the university where the professor works at to go destroy all of the evidence of his research as he had kind of requested in the video log. His office is still kept exactly as how he had left it. And I'm just like, really? The university would just like, they know he's he's gone, right? He's not coming back. Why are they just leaving his stuff there? She's like looking for all the research stuff and she finds a set of pictures. Okay, this was a pretty cool moment. I mean, well, we don't know what it is until she goes to Sierra's house. And this is another one of those moments where I'm just like, okay, it's like nighttime. She goes to Sierra's house. Sierra opens the door. They're like talking in the dark. And I'm like, why, why isn't anyone turning on lights? Why are you guys just sitting and talking in the dark? But anyway, she's like telling Sierra, she's like, I found these pictures of the professor and his wife who actually died a long time ago. And the wife turns out to be Madeline. It's like this big revelation where is like, oh my God, the professor was so obsessed with these changeling fairies because he wanted to bring his dead wife back in the form of a fairy. Because even in one of his video logs, he talked about how we could like cheat immortality with these fairy powers or with these fairies. And I'm like, that also makes no sense because they just look like the human. They're not actually the human that died. How is that cheating immortality? How does that even work? And also if they can mimic Madeline, his wife, just through like pictures and maybe his description of his wife's personality, why do they need to even watch humans in a box in this moment when they're sitting in the dark when Mina's talking to Sierra? She's not actually Sierra. She's Madeline.
Madeline in the form of Sierra, and then Sierra comes back, and then Madeline sort of attacks both of them. And then there's this ultimate showdown that happens where Mina's fighting Madeline, and then right before she's about to, you know, go down, <laughs> she starts this whole emotional speech about how Madeline, you're not actually you're not actually a full-fledged fairy. You're like a half-human. You're like a half-bred. You're a half-blood. You're a mud-blood, Madeline. <laughs> you're just not even, you're part human. And I know you're just lonely and you want companionship. <laughs> I don't know what she said. But she made this whole long speech that apparently touched Madeline's heart to the point where she sprouts wings and she doesn't finish off Mina and she just flies off. And I don't know what she's going to do from this point. But that is it. After watching this movie, I felt like I shouldn't have watched it. I think I would have been better off like not knowing what the watchers are and just live the rest of my life wondering some things are best left unknown and this is like one of those moments where you're like it's a secret that should have been taken to the grave